Hi everybody. This is just a quick video about dark comets which have been in the news recently. So what are dark comets? What's what this all about? Well, there's a new class of near-Earth object. Uh, so an object in the solar system that swings past the Earth at relatively close distances on its path and its journey around the sun. These are similar to asteroids, perhaps 10 to 100 metres across, but they move on more comet-like orbits in some cases, but they don't have tails. So normal comets would have a tail. These are tailless objects and causing a little bit of a mystery. This is a typical asteroid that's been visited recently by the uh, Lucy mission in uh, uh, 2023. Sorry. Um, it's uh, orbiting around in the main asteroid belt, the main body, just under 800 metres across, so fairly modest for an asteroid. But curiously, it's found to be a contact binary. The second small lump that you can see at the bottom of the picture there is a separate rock 220 metres across that has been in orbit round it, but is just gently touching the surface there as the two rotate now. Um, and this is a possible member of the Flora asteroid family. Asteroids seem to occur in collections, groups or families, which are grouped together because their orbits are similar. They have the same orbital tilt, the same uh, maximum and minimum distance from the sun, the same orbital eccentricity, so they're equally elliptical, and they're moving in these families or groups all strung out along the same orbit. And they probably all arose from a great collision of a larger parent body where an enormous smash up occurred between uh, two objects colliding and created a shower of fragments. And this and the asteroid Flora and about 13,000 other asteroids all seem to come from the same place. So this is a fairly typical looking asteroid. It's a rough collection of rocks that have come together, some large ones, some small ones. You can see it's really in the process of merging with the uh, large lump that's uh, sat at the bottom there. So fairly typical. Comets, on the other hand, look very different. This is Hale Bop from 1997. They've been, often been described as a dirty snowball with a tail of dust and gas where the heat of the sun is boiling material off and it streams out away from the sun, carried downwind by the solar wind, the stream of particles from the sun. And those particles also can ionise some of the gas. And that's what's happening here with Hale Bop. The blue ion tail is ionised material where the radiation and highly energetic particles in the solar wind have stripped electrons from some of the atoms, made them electrically charged. And then because of the sun's magnetic field, those ma um, magnetic field deflects electric charges. And so the charged particles in the tails get swept aside onto a different path. So comets and asteroids, very different looking objects. So what about these dark comets? Well, actually, there seem to be two classes of them. Inner dark comets that are in nearly circular orbits, so more like an asteroid, and are smaller, tens of metres in diameter, and orbiting around in close proximity to the Earth, roughly one astronomical unit, the Earth-Sun distance, and uh, thereby by classed as near-Earth objects. And there's a number of them shown in the right-hand part of the diagram. So they swing around in these nearly circular orbits at about 1 AU. They've all got these catalogue numbers, which is the year, and then some letters and numbers that uh, tell you which object we're actually talking about. And then on the left hand side of the diagram, we've got outer dark comets whose orbit goes rather further. Um, and uh, these swing out into the outer solar system on much more elliptical trajectories 
and uh, they go out and perhaps are associated with the gravity of Jupiter having an influence on them as their orbits seem to go out as far as Jupiter and then dive back in. And these tend to be larger. Now, that may be because being on average further away, we find it easier to find only the larger members of the outer dark comets, and there may be yet more smaller ones to find. <clears throat> now, some of these objects have also had their origins from beyond the solar system, and we'll see one particularly famous case just in this little talk. So this all kicked off, really, when in 2003, an object 2003 RM was located, and in tracking the orbit of it, it's important to track near-Earth asteroids in case any of them come too close to the Earth and risk colliding with it, of course. Um, see the dinosaurs for details. But in tracking 2003 RM, what we found was that it was off course. It was orbiting in a manner which we normally see in comets, but we don't normally see in asteroids. But of course, this one is showing absolutely no sign of a tail, so we would classify it as an asteroid, not a comet. Very unusual behaviour. What causes the comets to go off course, we will talk about in a minute, and we can understand that much more easily. So that was 2016, when this particular object was recognised as having a, a strange orbit. And then you might remember Oumuamua, in 2017, perhaps the most famous dark comet of all. This was a visitor from another star system. It came in whizzing through the solar system on a high angle from up above the plane of the solar system on a very uh, much hyperbolic trajectory, so not captured by the sun's gravity at all, an open-ended orbit that would go out and uh, disappear forever, never to return. And we didn't see it until after the close approach. It was on its way out of the solar system when we detected it. So had this been on a trajectory to hit the Earth, uh, we would not have seen it coming. It was coming from a direction that just was in the day side of the sky at the time. And so uh, we were not able to track it. Once we did see it, all we could really see was a single point of light and follow it across the sky and work out its orbit. And again, we spotted that its trajectory, the path through the solar system, did not seem to be what we expected. It was getting changed as though it were a comet. What do I mean by that? Well, comets move because they get warmed by the sun. They boil off all that material that makes the tail. And in the process, they're absorbing a lot of energy from the sun and that pushes on them and deflects them. So their orbits are not purely determined by gravity. And so what we think is happening with these asteroids that are showing this non-gravitational trajectory where they don't seem to quite obey the laws of Isaac Newton and Kepler. Is that they are emitting jets of gas, not so much dust, or we would see it, but just gas. So the heat from the sun is boiling off volatile gases, ammonia, methane, water vapour perhaps. And this outgassing on the sunward side where the heat is hitting them is creating a differential thrust that is acting like a rocket motor and deflecting their path around the sun so that uh, they uh, seem to follow this non-gravitational trajectory, as it's called. Um, and we think that this was what was happening with Oumuamua. In that case, I think it was probably hydrogen. Very, very cold in deep space, cold enough for hydrogen to form as a solid. And this was being released due to the slight warming of coming into the solar system is enough to create this jet effect and push the... Uh, object off its course. Of course, at the time, a lot of people started making up wild and outlandish claims, including one or two fairly reputable scientists talking about the fact that perhaps Oumuamua might be an alien spacecraft. But uh, I think that's rather fanciful. 
and it was discussed as to whether we should send a probe to it. Now, the problem was, of course, it was already leaving the solar system. So this probe would have had to have been put together pretty rapidly and then tried to catch up with Oumuamua, which was moving very fast, had escape velocity from the sun, after all. So it was going at a high rate and uh, a space probe would have had to travel very rapidly to catch up with it. Now, what we do know about a lot of these uh, dark comets is that they contain a lot of these volatile chemicals. In particular, they probably contain a lot of water frozen up, and it's that boiling off that uh, is creating the thrust. And it's highly probable that this water in earlier generations of dark comets that have come crashing down to Earth has been the source and the delivery mechanism for delivering water to Earth. So very interesting from the point of view of where the Earth got its oceans. And we think that they contain quite a lot of organic material, other carbon compounds that could well have been responsible for seeding the early progress and formation of life on Earth. So fascinating from that point of view. And on the right here, I've just shown a sort of picture of a few of the molecules, the types of uh, chemicals that have been detected on the asteroid Ryugu, and in fact, also on the asteroid Bennu as well. These seem to be related objects formed in the early stages of the solar system and unmodified for four and a half billion years since. And what we have is that these are containing a lot of these molecules as well as a high water content and highly likely to be in their own right. These are just large versions of the dark comets. And uh, these are probably one of the sources of all of this material on Earth. And so I think actually these dark comets are of great interest, especially the ones that are crossing from one star system to another. And uh, I hope to hear more about it as we go forward. So thanks very much. And I'll bring this one to a close here.